Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. This is the second video in my Grow As We Grow series. It's a perk membership video, which means members actually are sending me uh, videos of their gardens right now, December, January. I put them together with my video and we're gonna go basically do a tour through the whole year and we're gonna show you our gardens as they grow. And if you're you know, in a different zone than I am, I'm in Maryland Zone 7, some of the videos that you see here are from all over the US and you can kind of match your garden to their garden. We're starting off here, this is the fruit area of my garden. Of course, it's the middle of January, things are dormant, the buds are starting to come back on the blueberry plants. And in about a month, I will give these a water-soluble fertilizer, one that's a little more acidic because blueberries do prefer a little more acidity, but I don't over worry about that. Come the beginning of spring, it's a great time to put in a lot of berry bushes. I have some trees back there. Kind of when it's cool, give them time for the root systems to establish and slowly grow into the spring, later spring and summer. Best time to plant these types of plants is really later fall when it's cool and the plants can establish and don't really have to worry about growing. More brambles, blackberries, canes, all coming up my tower are my um, tunnel right here made out of cattle panel and I'll be keeping that. Things look pretty good. I have to get out here, do a hard pruning of the muscadines and we're coming in the east side of my garden today just for a different change. And you can see things are kind of lying around that need to be cleaned up and when the beds sort of go to rest or the garden stops producing, <laughs> I sort of take a big break and slowly but surely when those warm days come, unseasonably warm in the winter, I'll get out here and clean up stuff. Like all these towers have to get cleaned up. This is what I call the skeleton bones, you know, of my winter garden. I do enjoy this. The so beds are in various stages of winter slumber. This is where I had my broccoli. Let's go to Gail's garden. When I first saw this video, I was like, is this my garden? It looks very, very similar. And she does exactly what I do and what I'm doing right now. As I walk around in the winter, kind of look at how things are growing, and I think about changes and redesigns that I'll be putting into my garden come early spring. Greetings, and welcome to Two Gals Vermont Homestead. I'm Gail, and today I'm just gonna be taking a quick look around the garden and see what's happening and get my head wrapped around what I'm gonna do for next season. So come join me as I walk through the garden and show you all the improvements that I made from last year, and I hope you enjoy it. Here we go, it's pretty snowy out here. Can barely get the gates open. I'm in the main part of the garden, the main entrance to the garden. We've got several raised beds over here in the barn. A couple raised beds here. These will be for vegetable gardening. And then the rest of the garden where I do my food forest over here. So we'll walk over this away. This corner is where I keep my green stock. And right now I have taken it apart because as you can see, it's rather snowy. It's full of strawberries. And so I planted the strawberries in the green stock, covered them up with straw, and they're all headed down this way. I also have three two by eight beds right here on the side. I have strawberries and some asparagus down on the far end. This year, I'm trying something new. I got some of these raised beds, raised metal beds that I'm actually going to put, I put them on top of my four by fours and I'm gonna put certain crops in the on the higher end and my flowers around the base. So that'll be an experiment to see how that grows. Walking down another aisle, I have my two rows of garlic where the sticks are heading right out this away. I've got this whole, is all garlic here. These other beds are empty. I've taken down the trellises because I'm gonna try some different things next year. This is where my tomatoes were, right here with this trellis. Walk around. In the back here, I added two two by four beds, two, two by, sorry, two by eight beds where I put my sunflowers. That provides a beautiful wall in the backside of the garden 
for all the sunflowers and they don't block any of the sun from the rest of the garden. This year, because <clears throat> we're in the north and we can't really get collards very well, I had a bunch of collards, so I just left them in to see what was going on. And I'll be doggone if they're not still growing. They're frozen solid, but when it thaws, they come to life. I have more garlic planted right in, he in through here. So I'm looking forward to double my garlic this year, which was actually fabulous Nick, last year. Came out really well. And again, the other beds covered in snow. The barn, keeping all the tools in there. Now we're gonna go out the back gate where I keep my gardening supplies and the compost piles compost bins. <clears throat> I finally got them all planted or built, I should say. Got them all built um, in the fall. That's for our kitchen scraps primarily. There's lots of animal tracks around. Keep all my leftover timber and supplies over in this side. But we really decided to get into composting. Here's my leaf bin. That was completely full. It's now down over two feet, just from decomposing. And very simple, put up my compost bins and they're getting filled up. As you can see, we're by the woods, we get lots of animals. So I do everything that I can to keep the animals from stealing things out of the compost, but that's okay. Tractor supplies. So there's a lot of things that we're gonna do in the spring, but I like to come out and walk around and say, okay, I'm gonna do this differently this year. And mostly with trellises and uh, where I plant certain crops. I actually enlarge the garden in the fall. So I'll have more, <clears throat> more um, space to put other things. And so I'm kind of excited to get things started. So I hope you enjoyed it. This is Vermont in the winter. I hope you all had a fantastic holiday season. Just to close out, I'd like to say keep learning, keep planting, and greetings from Vermont. Take care. I like her idea of the metal bed in a framed wooden box. I use metal beds framed boxes, all kinds of different things. And I really encourage people to kind of blend different design features together because it makes your garden unique and it does look really spectacular. She has kale that was surviving in the snow and I think I have a video on that from last year. It's really, really hardy. Like a lot of the stuff has died back. But as we come up to the kale, it's still alive. When the snow falls, covers it over, blankets it. It does freeze, but it comes back. Kale and collards are a really good crop to sort of grow through the winter. You don't harvest much, but when the spring comes, they flower and you can eat the buds and the flowers and they're absolutely delicious kind of for the first harvest coming out of your garden. I mean, most of my beds are gonna just sit like this for January and February. Where I can, I'm, or when I can, I'm cleaning out the beds, getting them ready for the spring. A mistake that you don't wanna make is leave your alfalfa open when it rains at night. Luckily it's cold, that'll get wet. It's gonna stay cold, I'll fix it so no more rainwater gets in there. But it's not gonna smell. If this gets wet during the spring and summer and you let it sit in there, it gets moldy, it smells really bad, I'll use all that up before it's really a problem. Let's go over to Linda's garden. She really is planting on a slope. Make sure you take a look at that because a lot of people do run into issues that my ground isn't flat, but she's doing a great job growing flowers, vegetables, berry bushes, and again, it's on a slope and it looks great. Hi, this is Linda. And this is my garden. It, I haven't done much in terms of um, winter prepping, except for allowing the leaves to stay on the ground. I have my vertical planter here which I may reposition in the spring. I have
have a um, another vertical um, structure that I have uh, blackberries, blueberries, not blueberries, blackberries, some Logan berries and some other berries on. Most of my garden right now, this last year, has been used for um, flower beds. I found that in the past, I grew so many vegetables that I really couldn't hardly even give them away quick enough. So I decided to grow less. Um, and I have made two kind of large uh, uh, vegetable beds that I um, hope to be growing on next spring. This is one of them. I kind of combined two beds together. I used to have wooden walls to these um, beds, but I took them off. I, didn't, I found they didn't do too well um, with the plants that I had here. For some reason, the plants did better without them, so I took them out. And right here I have a couple of, a few, actually three, blueberry bushes. Very young. Two of them um, were planted this past spring, and one of them was planted some time ago, but um, for some reason it got lost in my garden. I found it and I replanted it together with these three. They're probably planted too close together and I probably in the future need to move them apart or separate them. I might, may even do that in the spring and use this as one bed, which will have um, vegetables and uh, berries that need a lot of sun over here are i guess you would say a flower border on sort of a hill where i have roses um hydrangeas other plants and right over here that's a um against the wall is a um, pomegranate bush um in this bed I have um, saffron and I have um, Egyptian walking onions. I have some leftover oregano over there. And I kind of did a chop and drop this year as an experiment to see how that works. Um, so this is my garden. This is the back porch that I'm still in the process of cleaning. A vertical planter green stalk and I'm looking forward to the, doing more work out here and uh, to the spring. She definitely has experimenting and making changes and that's what I recommend. She's moving stuff to different parts of her garden. She's shrinking vegetable beds where she just can't use all the produce, putting in different crops, flowers, maybe some more fruits and berries. It's exactly what you want to do. Don't over worry about perfection. Set up your garden, start growing, and then you can start moving stuff around, you know, as you actually get real time experience seeing if it's something that you want to have in your garden. Let's walk over to the composting bins over there. This is the first sitting area I built for bonfires and such. Um, we got a gazebo, so I don't use this much. I'm going to change this over. Maybe one day a greenhouse will sit right on top of here. But I have lavender. There's blackberry brambles out here, which do get chewed down by deer. I want to show you the muscadine tunnel, because people have some interest in that. So the muscadines are like grapes, except they grow much more, I want to say, invasively, because they will get out of control. So these are going to need a hard prune. But I love being able to grow grapes over here. I have uh, green beans growing into the cattle panel, and it just makes a beautiful tunnel. Let's look at Alicia's garden. Alicia's garden is really planted along the perimeter of her fence, of her backyard, and it's just full of fruit trees. I think it's a really good use of space, and I like her disaster area, which she'll talk about. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Alicia. I'm known as Queen of NoHo on the membership roster. 
And uh, thank you for uh, taking time to view my video, Gary. And uh, I'd like to introduce you to my garden. I live in North Hollywood, California, and that is tone, uh, zone 10A. And so I'd like to take some time to just uh, uh, walk you around my garden. And so uh, we're going to start with the uh, ma mango tree. This is my mango tree. I just planted it um, about a month ago. And then I have here uh, my August peach, which um, blooms beautifully, has very sweet fruit, and I'm very uh, happy about this tree. And then right over here, I have, um, it's called Ruda. I think it might be Ru in English, so um, that's something that um, I keep for my mom. And uh, this is my Big Jim Mex, um, which has so survived so far. Uh, the one in the little gray uh, pot is um, Barbados cherry. And uh, the one next to it is jasmine. And uh, I'm really excited about um, my beets. So this is from seedling trays that I started. And then this is my Anna apple, which is uh, really super uh, sweet as well, the, the fruit. And then just to uh, give you some bearing here. So this is the east wall and then I've got the south wall and then I've got the west so that's what we're going to to do this way and so this is holy basil and then uh Gary this is a pear tree which for some reason the leaves uh get black spots on them and so I'm hoping that um maybe you might be able to help out with that I'm not sure what to do um, and I might have to just uh take it out um this is um an Anna uh, raspberry. This is a Santa Rosa plum, uh, which gave, gave really nice fruit. And I don't know if I made a mistake by putting asparagus in that um, pot. So I'm hoping that, I, I don't know what to do with that. Um, this is my fig tree, which is really nice, but it was kind of a bush. And so um, I'm trying to figure out what to do with it. And so this is a nice lemon tree that I just planted. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to have it grow into a tree or a bush. This is called um, a spicy Z nectar plum. And um, this is my first year with it. So I'm looking forward to seeing what, what comes out. And then I'm making space here for a honey crisp. And um, this is an English Morello cherry tree. And this is called a cotton candy, um, a nectar, I think it's a nectar plum, a cotton candy aprium. Um, and then I've got um, kind of this little planter box here. I've got carrots and garlic here. And I also have jalapenos. And then these black little, I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if you can see those little. So that's pretty nice. And then this is my indeterminate tomato. I don't know what kind of tomato it is um but it's surviving so far so i'm happy about that and then over here sorry about the mess uh, but i'm getting ready to add more um uh dirt in here and start putting my seedlings actually the ones that i have so far so i'm gonna put them here this is my avocado tree um it's doing very nicely these are uh eggplants that um are still surviving I put them in the shed whenever I can. This is a grape, which uh, I'm not sure what to do with this grape. It does give beautiful fruit, but um, I don't know. And this is my disaster area here. Uh, I've got to take everything out. I do have beautiful strawberries, so I'm going to try to uh, keep those. And then I've got, this is a serrano pepper, and this is an ancho chili. And that's a bell pepper. And then, I don't know, the nasturtiums just kind of took over. Uh, so I've got to kind of redo all of this area. And then I bought these uh, tiered planters. I just don't know that this is the right spot for them. And then I've got to take everything out over here. Although I am growing arugula, which that was a little bit of a surprise. Uh, this is a nice blackberry, which I hope I'm not going to kill. And then these are the rest of the... Um, I've got to take everything out of here. But I just I wanted you to see that the ancho chilies actually on, only ever got this big. And I'm not sure why. Maybe you can help out with that, Gary. And then 
gonna take you over here. So this is um, a lemon tree. This is a, the Mexican uh, lime, and this is an orange. And then I've got a blueberry bush here and a blueberry bush here. And the reason that I've got to keep all these fences up is because of these guys here. So, so thank you very much. Area. I've talked about it a lot. And I am going to highly recommend composting for 2023. Try and encourage people to get started sooner than later. I waited a little bit too long. Um, once I came to this property, I really set up things. I mean, you've seen these beds before. This is just for cold composting. That's actually asparagus plant sitting off top of there. If you don't, haven't grown asparagus before, and I believe Alicia said, what do I do with my asparagus? It's growing in a pot. I would just plant that right into the ground. It won't really take over. It'll get tall, but it'll do well in the ground and you'll get your asparagus spears early, you know, in the spring. Compost bins. It's easy to overdo it. I want to take a look at Jennifer's video. She talks about a simple compost system, which I agree, five is too complicated. How she kind of shrunk it down really makes sense. Hi there. Hello, Rustin Gardeners and Gary. My name is Jennifer, and I live in Keatesville, Maryland, which is halfway between Frederick and Hagerstown. And I wanted to take this opportunity to talk to you today about my composting system that I think I came up with myself. I'm not really sure. Modifications of Martha Stewart's, actually. She had about a five bin system, and I thought that seemed a little too complicated. Uh, but anyway, I will be showing you how I do make my compost, and I hope you enjoy. I'll start back here so you can sort of see the whole thing. Um, I do have a three-tier compost system, and I did that on purpose. I started with a two-tier system, but I just didn't find that quite as user-friendly, so I decided that when I moved here 17 years ago, uh, I asked my husband to build a three-tier system. So, the concept is, I pick one tier, in my case it's the outside right one to be just the final product, and then between the other two, I flip back and forth. Um, so what's at the top of this tier will get put at the bottom of this, and then I will be able to take what's at the bottom of this one and put it over here onto the final product. So that's what I'm going to do next. I think the process of turning this is really important because the compost and dirt gets mixed in as you're turning it, so it really sort of helps to get intermixed into the pile. Um, I find that the more often I do it, the more compost I end up with, um, but I always have more than I need. Just have to show off because only other gardeners will appreciate it. Worms as big as snakes in this compost. And here's the finished project. The far left bin has been thrown into the middle, which is now a nice compact pile, and everything from the bottom has been put over into the last final bin. And that's just really, really nice dirt. Very easy to work, very light. I did want to also mention that um, I said I put this in 17 years ago and nothing has had to be changed or replaced or repaired. Same fencing, same posts, so this is my compost system. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much for giving me a chance to show it off. Take care. Jennifer, don't worry about saying the, the wrong words. I do that all the time. Just have fun with it. Simple compost pile, similar to what she does. My three stations are just right over there. One, two, and then I put the mostly finished compost right there. I let it break, break down. I don't like turning mine just because I'm, I don't know, lazy is probably the right word. It's just extra work for me, but it absolutely 100% speeds up the process. You can process the compost uh, much more quickly, and it really isn't a lot of work, you know, and maybe I will work on my discipline and do a little more turning and getting the compost ready. Right now, I've been doing this for three or four years, and I have a lot. I've been digging it out of here. It's going into beds as the days get warmer here, or when you get, again, those unseasonably warm weather for winter, 
like we were in the 60s, I think, last week, I prepare a couple of beds. So come spring, I won't have to do a lot of that work. Maybe two weeks ago, it was in the 60s and 50s at night in the day. I mean, it was really warm. I want to walk over real quick to the compost pile here. This is the green core compost pile that I've done videos on. As I approach that, let's go to Stacy's garden. We're going to look at her rooted heart garden, and it's a space that was in her front yard that she totally transformed, and I just, I think it's beautiful. I really, really like it. Hi and welcome, it's Stacy. I'm your urban chicken mama and I'd like to welcome you to my front yard garden, what I like to call my rooted heart garden. I created this space out of nothing and I'd love to show you around. I live about 30 minutes south of Seattle in a little town called Auburn, Washington. Let me take you on a tour. So here's my front yard garden. Two years ago, it was an ugly gravel driveway full of weeds and I've turned it into a beautiful, beautiful garden space. So these yellow vessels here, I do perennials in, and so they'll come back beautiful, beautiful flowers next year. The winter took that one, so I have to decide what to do there. Over here, I have a bunch of root pouches. I love the root pouches. This year, I had peppers and tomatoes and garlic in them. And now there's some brassicas that are held over. I'll give to the chickens probably. And you'll probably notice that I like DIY. So I buy things from the thrift store and I make cute little planters. These are usually just flowers, not any vegetables. And I love to create them. And you'll notice that the red posts, those aren't from the thrift store. Those are from a building, a carport building that I just painted red and recreated to for this purpose. I got this and her matching sister. They were really ugly and rusted at a um, antique store and painted them red and made them into planters instead of chairs. This I also got at the thrift store and it was rickety and painted it red and made it really super pretty. I love love my towers. I probably won't put the hay in them or straw in them going forward because Gary said it's not necessary but I'd already done it so it's fine. And I put the bottoms in to make them just more stable. These were five dollars each at a local recycling center that I made strawberry towers out of and then more pouches and another strawberry tower. Over here there's normally a bird bath that's in for the winter. I love to sit in my garden in different areas and enjoy it, so that is perfect for that. So there's not much going on this time of year, just because, oh, this one, this was the first one I found at a Goodwill. And i never forget the employee was like, I'm so glad you bought that. And I told her I was gonna make a garden planter out of it. So I just love that it still has the glass in it. So there is some things still popping out just not as much as in the normal season, or the, the summer season, if you will. That's my cattle panel wall that I've used different things to, to make growing on the, on the wall much easier. I love to grow the peas, all the trellis things on this wall. This is a project I'm trying out this year, which I doubt is gonna work just because we were 17 degrees two weeks ago. I have all my peppers under there and that is two 150 gallon root pouches that evidently it's hard to find anymore. But I figured I'd give it a try and see. And over here is Onion City. So I have many different onions in there growing. As you can see, some are better than others. And right now I've got garlic in these root pouches. That one has nothing. And then here's my roses that are in containers for the rooted heart trellis there. So yeah, this is a dollar store garden tower that I just use for flowers because it's so shallow, but I love it. It pops in the summer and it is absolutely beautiful. So I am so happy to share with you the garden I created out of nothing. Make it a great day.
Give Stacy a cheers to thrift stores and DIY. This is the thermometer. It is sitting at, let's see if we can show it. That is 60 degrees, which is pretty good because the nights are getting into the 20s here. That core is still keeping this warm enough. And when it's staying in the 40s, 50s, 60s, when your temperatures are freezing outside, it's breaking down more quickly. And again, inside of that is just a core of green grass, helps speed up the breakdown. This is mostly for leaf mold. These are leaves in there. But a combination of leaves and grass can speed up the process. It's not necessarily hot composting. I'm not turning it, but this was filled all the way to the top. And you can see that how it's dropping and sort of, you know, basically breaking down. And that's what you want it to do. It doesn't take a long time to get compost, you just kind of got to build the bins, build the bins and get started. I really like the Grow As We Grow series. I think it's going to be so much fun to see our gardens now. And then I encourage you, if you you know, if you want to do a video every month, you can send it to me. Um, and we're going to get to see how our gardens come to life. We're going to get to see harvesting all the successes, along with a couple of issues, I'm sure. But I think it'll be a lot of fun. I think it's best to end right here with Cece. I liked her video. It kind of sums up what most of us are thinking now with the winter. And I encourage people, you know, maybe start some seeds indoors. Thanks so much, Cece. And thanks for watching The Rusted Garden. Um, again, please subscribe. And if you want to join the Perk Memberships, You'll be able to send me videos. I'll incorporate them into Grow As We Grow. And you can shout out your social media and I'll put in links in the video description for you. Again, this is a great video to end today's Grow As We Grow from CC.